Welcome back to the channel golfers. Today's video is the first round of mine and fences trip to Gran Canaria and we are at Salobra Golf Resort. Currently this place has 27 holes. It has an 18 hole old course and 9 holes of the new course open as it stands. Today I'm playing holes 10 to 18 of the old course and then holes 1 to 9 of the new course. Let's get down to the first tee. What are your initial impressions mate? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's quite nice, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely stunning. It's quite nice. Can't wait to get out. First tee views. Fence to start us off on the first tee then, and in true fence tradition, banana slice, but it'll work. he always has that banana slice shape to his tee shots, but he's in play. Looking to keep mine in play then. Yeah, first tee nerves. Way. All downhill and 259 yards this part four, so it's a fairly easy hold to start with. And the drive was actually really good. Leaves me just shot of the green chipping over the 56 degree wedge. And this is my first taste of wow. these super fast greens. They roll. I thought I played a really good shot there, but it just rolled off the back. So putting back downhill towards the pin. And you can tell I got scared of that one. So now trying to clear up for par. And just a misread there, didn't quite give that one enough break. But a tap in bogey, I've had worse starts to rounds, we'll take that one. The second then is a par 3 from an elevated tee, so it's a great looking hole this one. It's about 184 yards to the pin though, so it's quite a distance. I've taken a 6 iron and pulled this one straight left. It was looking like it was going to go out of bounds. But it hit the cart path, I think it hit maybe a tree, and it's bounced back out into the fairway just before the green. So again, this has left me chipping with my 56 degree wedge. Uh, I pushed this one a little right this time, uh, so it's ended up just on the edge of the green on the right hand side. So a long put for par. And that's not a dreadful effort, and should leave me with a fairly makeable put for another bogey. But you can hear what Fence thinks of that one. Got scared of the greens, I think. And just left it short. This man is worried. Wow. Very worried. Oh dear. Where are we? That's some force carry, mate. Where are we? <laughs> you genuinely, from the tee box of this hole, had no visual of the fairway. We sort of knew which way to hit it just from the direction of the tee box and as it happened I hit a pretty good tee shot. Unfortunately I've just sort of blinded myself from the green so I'm having to hit this three wood across yeah, yeah, the yeah. corner there and uh, topping it a bit. This has left me 120 into the green so I'm hitting a 9-9. Lost this in the sun but actually it was a fantastic shot. And you can see what I think of that one. It really was a picturesque course and we got fabulous weather for the day. Bit of a tasty shot, even if I do say so myself. So looking to get my first power of the round then. And again, absolutely no clue with these greens. I've powered that past, leaving myself a tricky one that just drops for bogey. Got away with that one. The 13th hole on the old course has this bridge and sort of semi-island tee box. Um, so it's a really, really cool experience to go and play this hole. Even if you're playing bad golf, when you're walking around a course that's as pretty as this one, it's really hard to be annoyed. So taking three hybrid off this tee, just because I thought driver was a little bit too much, and I've caught this one pretty well leaving me a look around the corner towards the green, even though it's quite a long way. I wasn't sure where I was hitting this one, so I decided to play safe, play a 9-iron up towards the green, and then look to play on with a wedge. This has all gone to plan so far, leaving me a 56 wedge on to the green, which is a little bit right, but not too bad at all, and leaves me a solid chance at making a par. which had a little bit of a look, but again, properly over hit. 
and I do manage to drop that one for the bogey. Relatively well played hole that one. Our fifth hole then is a par 3. Big bunker to the front of the green and to the right. Unfortunately, my 7 iron tee shot here winds up in that front bunker. It's not a great lie either, so I've got a 60 degree wedge in hand and just trying to get this on the green. And I've bladed that one good and proper straight over the other side of the green into the other bunker. That one's caught the lip and bounced back into the same bunker that I'm in. So, third shot trying to get out of the sand and I just about manage it this time. So shot five then is a wedge shot towards the pin. This I feel much more comfortable with. And it nestles up pretty close and means that I can tap in for a triple bogey. That one's disappointing. Poor bunker play cost me there. The sixth is the first par five. It's fairly straight this one, but narrow-ish fairway. It sort of gets a little bit thinner where our balls are likely to land and I wind up on the right hand side of it there. This leaves me a three wood, just looking to get this down the fairway. Again, it's not a great hit, but it is 170 odd yards down there, so I can't complain too much with that. Leaving me a three hybrid into the green, which I hook and pull big time. Uh, luckily there was nobody over that way, and I actually wind up on the next hole's tee box uh, with, a, with a view through to the pin. So just taking a little 60 degree wedge here and trying to play it as close as I can. It doesn't go too bad, it does leave me a putt at par. Which is okay. It means it should be a relatively stress free bogey. Not a bad played hole that one either to be honest. Yep. Hole 7 then is another par 4 with a slight dog leg bend to the left. Uh, there was like what we thought was a ditch in the centre of this hole. Uh, you can see it vaguely on the map. Um, and we both went for it and I managed to carry it. Fence unfortunately did not. Uh, but this has left me an achievable shot into the green, which you can see I've just chunked badly. Leaving me a 56 degree wedge from 70 yards onto the green. I couldn't quite see from where I was, but it's like a three tiered green. And I've actually wound up on the third bottom tier and the flags up on the top there. So this is a very tricky putt. And actually considering how my putting's been going, that's not a bad effort. This, however, is a terrible effort. I don't know how I'd convince myself that was breaking right, uh, given that the whole green slopes down to the left. But there you are. So, an unfortunate double bogey there. Hole 8, then, is a 405-yard par 4. And this isn't the best tee shot of the day, but it is in play 200 yards further up the fairway. So, I can't really be too upset with that one. 205 yards in then, I'm hitting three hybrid. Um, unlikely to get to the green, but it's a decent shot. Winds up about 50, 40, 50 yards short. Uh, it leaves me chipping on. and I've just not carried this far enough. And this ball didn't look like it was going to stop rolling. I thought it was going to come all the way back to me at one point. It does finally nestle. So chipping on for my fourth shot then. And that's okay, but this is really where my game differs from playing in the UK to playing somewhere like this, is I'd feel fairly confident chipping from that range and then one putting. But on greens like this, it's taking me three putts, leaving me with a triple bogey. That's a really disappointing hole that and zapped the confidence. Looking to redeem myself on the ninth then, and it's not going to happen with tee shots like that. That's topped about a hundred and a few yards in front of me. I then top a three wood. And I mean top a three wood. You can see that I've almost dug down on the ball there. So I put the three wood away. And the three hybrids treating me no better. That's gone even less distance to be honest. And I'm really struggling now. Confidence is quickly evaporating. Three hybrid again. 
And at least this goes 120 yards this time. But it's not a good shot. Leaving me 146 into the green. So I'm taking a 6 iron. And whilst it was chunky, it was in the air and it did actually travel some distance. Up there. Progressively better. So this has left me a 56 wedge chipping on, which I've thinned. You can see the confidence really has evaporated at this point. Bit thin. Which is leaving me chipping back towards the green. This had rolled further than I thought it had. And I don't catch this how I want it to really. And it luckily rolls down both those tiers and gets to the pin. So I am putting now. But never really looked like dropping. And it's taken me nine shots to get the ball in the hole. So that concludes an opening nine holes to forget. Similar to my Phoenix trip, I'm really struggling with the pace of the greens. Stood over the putts, I have almost no idea how fast the ball is likely to travel, and this is having a massive effect on my ability to pick good lines as well. Unlike my Phoenix trip though, I'm back to struggling to make good contact with my 3-wood and 3-hybrid. Luckily, the driver seems to be having a decent day and giving me chances from the fairway off the tee. Let's see if I can put in a better performance on the back nine. The first one on the new course then, or the 10th hole of our round, is a really pretty par 5. It's sort of a dog leg to the left, but the elevated tee box gives you a nice view of the surroundings. This tee shot, however, is probably just a little bit too long. Fence thought this had gone off the edge, but as you can see, it's just clung on. However, I've had a bit of a mare with the camera here. It must have already been recording because I put it down and pressed record, which has obviously then turned the recording off. Uh, and then you can see, as I come back to the camera and press the button to stop it recording, the ball's disappeared. Um, I've missed the shot, and now you get to see me carry the camera away. However, it wasn't a good shot. It was actually only a little bit further down the fairway and it left me this 170 yard shot towards the green which I've sliced with the three wood out of bounds. So dropping for my fifth shot into the green with a 56 degree wedge. This one's gone better. It's given me a chance at saving a bogey. And that's one of the closest putts I've hit from that sort of distance but does mean that I have to settle for another double bogey. The 11th then is a 170 yard par three. I've took a three hybrid and this looked brilliant from the tee box. Imagine that's it. Imagine that's it. It wasn't in the hole. It had run off the back of the green and left me chipping. And those that watch this channel regularly will know that I'm pretty good at chipping and that is atrocious. Really struggling to keep my head there, I nearly launched that club. So it's left me a long putt for par, which I didn't pick a great line for. Leaving me this putt and Fence asked if I, he wanted me to move the ball and I said if I hit your ball it's gone drastically wrong. And that's gone drastically wrong. And so we put his ball back to where it was. And he lets me tap in for yet another double bogey. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I bit that tee shot and then made such a meal of that. The 12th then is called the hardest. This is a par 5 with a forced carry to the green. And I've hit my best tee shot of the day here. Whilst the majority of my game is falling to pieces, the driver really is saving me at the moment. So now I'm playing a 50 wedge up to the front of the forced carry. I've actually hit this a little bit short to leave me a decent shot into the green. Fence, however, is going for it in two. It was brave, but his slice has just taken him to the right hand side of the green and that's a lost ball. I've got a 9-9 then into the green for my third shot. Overcooked this one slightly, but I do end up on the back edge of the green. So I'm not complaining with that. You then have to take a crazy cart ride round the edge of the cliff to the green.
just see more of this beautiful course. So I've actually got a birdie put here, believe it or not. Never even got close to threatening the hole though. Fence, I think putting for a 9 or 10. He had a bit of a mare on this hole unfortunately after that good start. And I've got a put for par. And I finally made a par. I was genuinely really happy with that. I don't know if you can tell how uphill that is, but it's massive. It's got this man absolutely quaking. I'm cheating myself. It's ridiculous. I don't understand it. What is the message, guys? <laughs> Unreal. This hole actually looked a lot further off the tee box than it was. It's only 244 yards. And after hitting this tee shot, I, think that's the best drive I've ever. I was telling Fence that I thought that was the best drive I've ever hit. But actually the hole's just not that long and it's left me with a 60 degree wedge onto the green. Which I've got very lucky with to be honest because it's clung on on the front edge. So now putting towards the pin for a birdie. Again, never threatened the hole. Should give me an easy par though. Another reoccurring theme of the Gran Canaria courses you'll find is that Fence likes to stand in the way. So feel free to absolutely rib him in the comments below. However, I missed the par putt. Wasn't even close. That's just how much these greens are in my head. So it's happening for a bogey. And I've missed that one. Fence reprimanding me here and asking me what the hell I'm doing. I've got no answers for him. View review. That is absolutely stunning. Look at that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, there's worse ways to spend your day, isn't there? Get me back to sit here, wakey. <laughs> <laughs> stunning hole, this one. 326 yard par four. Again, I hit another decent tee shot. Nice draw off the tee, 236 yards, leaving me in prime position to attack the green. 90 yards in. However, I pulled this 50 degree wedge. He sort of catches the front edge of the green and then rolls to the left, that sort of crater area you can see there, which was disappointing. But it's left me a chance to chip. And again, that's woeful. And that's really got to me now because my chipping's one of the best parts of my game and you can see I'm really frustrated with that. So I've got a put for par. Can you believe it? Salobra must have thought I was order put or something. Hole 15 then is another par 3, 156 yards. This one has water behind it. Uh, so I took a 7 iron trying to keep this safe. And then I actually ended up thinning it straight at the pin. I just played a good shot. Mine just rolled off the back of the green to there. So I've got some shot coming up. Can't knock these views though. So it really didn't leave me with much of a stance where the ball was, so getting any club on the ball I was happy with. And that wound up on the fringe there, leaving me chipping towards the pin. And the chipping game really hasn't been with me at all today. That's a disappointing one. Tough putt for bogey. And I've not been able to drop it. And yet again, another double bogey on a par three. Disappointing. Hole 16 is another par four uphill. Another good tee shot from me though, putting me in a good position. That had more toe on it than Simon Baker. However, when you get to the uh, approach shot, the gradient on the hill makes this one a really tough shot and you can see I've just caught that thin in the end. Leaving me a 56 degree wedge onto the green. That one looked pretty good from where I was stood. And it wasn't too bad at all. So I put for par. Overhit it a little bit. But I do manage to clean this one up for a bogey. 
On to the 17th then, and me and the fence were arguing about which club we should take. I went for six in the end. I told him I was going to stick this one close. All right, then, it? And I did. This is Fence's putt for par. And now my putt for birdie. Can he? No. He can't. But it's the most stress-free par I've made all day. So I can't be too upset with that one. On to the 18th then, and I just want to finish well here. A par means that I will keep my score under 100. And unfortunately that tee shot came straight off the toe and went 90 degrees to the right. So I'm having to re-tee for three. And again, this time I do smoke the driver. It's been very good all day. That was just a very disappointing miss hit. This leaves me 175 into the green. Fence convinced me to hit this three hybrid. And you can see what's happened next. I've smashed that straight down into the ground and it's gone nowhere. So cheers, Fence. This leaves me 134 into the green. Should be a comfy eight iron. Unfortunately, I caught it a little bit chunky and I've caught the front edge slash rocks on the front of the green and it's rolled into the water. So we dropped it where we thought this drop area was. And that's not a good shot into the green either. Really, really struggled with the wedges today. And you can see that's yet another poor example of a chip. Under hit your first one. Of course, you're always going to over hit the next one. So now I'm putting towards the pin for a 10. And I've got it nowhere near. And I finally get the ball in the hole for a disaster 11. Well, I just about played better on the back nine, although I tried my hardest to score higher on that last hole. It was a funny round for me this, as I actually felt somewhat confident before starting. Your confidence, however, can be quickly eroded in golf, and this happened to me today. The greens gave me real trouble from the start, but my irons and wedges confidence dropped after that eighth hole, and I never really got back into a flow with them. I'm happy I managed to grind out a few pars on the back nine, but this round gives me a fairly low bar to break in my upcoming rounds whilst in Gran Canaria. As always golfers, let me know your thoughts on the round in the comments below. Salobra is a fantastic scenic resort and they're still working to improve it. Definitely worth a visit if you're out playing this way. They've actually invited me back out in March, so I'll be returning with renewed confidence to get revenge for this score. Thanks for watching golfers. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you did enjoy and I'll catch you in the next one.